Far Cry 6 is a lot of fun, but it is absolutely massive and there is a shed load of things going on in the game. So I thought it would be a good idea to whip up a list of some of the best things to know, including tips and tricks to kind of give you a heads up before you do become a revolutionary. First up though, big thanks to Sylvia, the Ubisoft UK team, who pinged me across an early access code. This allowed me to get this video out to you pretty sharpish, so hopefully it does help you out and let's get going. Let's talk about the map first and we have three major storyline regions in the game with the final quest line finishing in the capital city of Esperanza. However, we start on the tutorial island which is in the bottom left hand corner of the map and this is where you're going to learn the basics and after you do finish it you'll then have the choice to either pick one of the three mainland regions. The game does recommend though that you head to the Magrugada region first as it introduces you to the storyline behind the tobacco plant Vivero which is the cancer treatment that Yara is currently producing on the worldwide stage. This is also the location where you're actually going to pick up the amazing Amigo Chorizo quite quickly so it's a pretty good region to start in. However saying that there isn't a mandatory path in terms of which region to explore first you can actually choose any one of the three you want and to kind of give you a little bit of context behind the remaining two the region of the Val de Oro shelters the youth of Yara who are known for their political protests against the government and the region of El Este which is where the older generation of Yara have begun their uprising against the Castillo regime you can actually even travel to the capital of Esperanza straight away but do prepare to get a bit of a hard time as the NPCs will most likely one shot you if you do cause issues it's also possible to actually start one region and without finishing the storyline there you can then progress progress to another and start that storyline so you then basically have two major plot lines live simultaneously so it really is up to you what you decide to do whether that's just smashing a story region out straight away or traveling across all three of them to do all of the side quests and activities. Now everything in this game revolves around chests, resources and loot so if you want to mod up your weapon, upgrade your guerrilla settlement or pimp out your whip it's going to cost you to do so. In total there's five types of chests in Yara for you to loot and they are generally worth going to the effort to actually open up if you're in the vicinity as it all does add up and compound in the long run. First chest to know and look out for is the Libertad chest and this contains gear pieces and weapons which are all random by the way. So for example you could pick up an SMG from one of these chests whereas I actually may get a new pair of trainers. So the good thing to know about this one is if you actually free hostages around Yara they will reward you with info and locations and all of these chests will then subsequently just pop up on your map which is very useful. Secondly the FND cash crates only appear in restricted areas and military sites so they're going to provide us with gunpowder and supremo bombs which are very very important crafting materials for your weapons so definitely don't breeze past these if you do go and raid one of these military bases. Now our third crate is the weapon cache crate and these are hidden all across Yara and they are going to reward you with unique weapons. The difference with these ones is that they're not random by the way and they will appear in the same locations and provide the same weapon for both me and you but the caveat being is you can't actually mod or craft these. These are just a unique weapon in a specific location. Now fourth is our cryptographic chest you'll need to find keys near them which actually unlock advanced pieces of gear so it's a bit of a trade-off there you'll have to do a small puzzle for them and they're not too challenging but I don't find them particularly fun it's your core on that one and finally the spray can and jewelry boxes they look like this on your map and they're going to grant you with a spray can which actually unlocks new skins for your weapons and I didn't know about these until I was actually picking them up but I'm glad I did because it actually allows you to chop and change the visual look of each one of your armor pieces and weapons which I really value to be fair now all of these chests aside you're going to be collecting a lot of metal oil and medicine when you do actually raid fnd military bases and convoys now these are the three bread and butter resources for your settlement upgrade so if you do see them don't not loot them they're very important and the same thing goes for plastics and random metal parts that you find scattered all over the floor these all contribute to crafting better mods for your weapons so basically in short loot everything that you see in this game and you'll be good now this brings us quite nicely onto customization and it really is one of the major selling points of Far Cry 6 and I personally am a really big fan of it. First up you can actually transmog everything as soon as you actually pick up new gear pieces to no cost to you and there's no need for you to actually return to the camp to do so. It's as simple as literally clicking on the item that you've equipped and then using the transmog button to then change its appearance to something else that you prefer and this doesn't impact abilities or gear bonuses it's a really great feature in my opinion. Secondly there's no skill trees or specific abilities in Far Cry apart from your Supremo backpack. Everything is actually centered around your arsenal and gear choices, meaning that what you choose to put on your gun or what shoes you choose to equip generally make an impact in game. For example, when you actually open your mobile phone to scan enemies, you'll notice that they actually have strengths and weaknesses. And if we take this enemy in particular, he's going to take more damage if we use armor piercing rounds. Incidentally, I've actually modded my sniper rifle to be equipped with armor piercing rounds. So I'm going to be able to do serious damage to this type of enemy. But when it comes to actually modding and changing your weapon, 
like this. You'll need to do it at a workbench, by the way, which is located all around Yara and they look like this on the map. Now, back to this dude. Comparatively, though, if I actually then use my rifle against the same type of enemy with soft rounds, the damage is going to be less and it's going to be more challenging to kill this NPC. Additionally, poison based enemies also suffer greatly from fire damage, so it would make sense for me to mod my gun up for incendiary fire rounds. So, speaking of which, there's actually six different types of bullet rounds available to choose in the game and you can actually kind of see what each one of them does on your screen right now and each one of course has its advantages and disadvantages equally npcs will also run with specific ammo and bullet types and there are gear sets that do protect you from each bullet type respectively so if you're running around in nothing but your pants you generally may get one shotted by a sniper who's equipped armor piercing rounds so it is worth your time figuring out a weapon you like to use and then picking a modification which then complements your play style as it can really compound into something wonderfully enjoyable in game so now that we know that looting scraps of metal will allow us to craft some cool modifications to our weapons at the workbench what is the deal with weapons in general well for some weapons in game you'll actually have to meet specific criteria to be able to unlock them and you also may notice that there's numbered stars against each weapon in your infantry and one star is essentially your entry level weapon whereas four stars is your premium and best performing weapon within each firearm category you've also got three primary weapons to run with one sidearm and one suprema backpack which you'll be able to access using that familiar ubisoft wheel some weapons also allow for single fire burst or automatic by the way and you can kind of change that here on the wheel which actually took me way too long to figure that out additionally you may also notice a secondary wheel to the left hand side of your primary weapon wheel and you'll actually be able to add certain offensive and defensive items into these slots in your suprema backpack when you're at the workbench and you'll actually be able to throw a baseball to distract enemies or use throwing knives or a molotov or even chuck a healing grenade at yourself so this actually all took me 20 hours of game time to figure this out which is incredibly embarrassing but it really is very useful when you know that's there now in the weapon menus if you actually hover your icons over the lot weapons it will tell you how to actually get them and this goes for everything in your infantry by the way so whenever in doubt just hover your cursor over for a quick reminder on where to obtain that specific item or resource so by using that hover icon tip we know that we can actually obtain these standard weapons found in military bases or actually purchase them for career garrisons which we'll get to shortly resolver weapons and supremas though are are a different kettle of fish and they are above average and unique weapons that can actually only be purchased from Juan's shop or his dealers throughout Yara by using depleted uranium as a currency and you can actually only obtain that from anti-aircraft sites so some of these weapons actually require you to be a certain career rank as well which brings us quite nicely onto experience and ranking up so when it comes to experience every time you complete a storyline mission capture a military base or even shoot a billboard while you're driving down Yara's highways you're going to increase your reputation or what the game likes to call greatness and when it comes to greatness there's actually 14 career ranks in total and you can actually access this by clicking on your current rank in the arsenal menu option the big benefit of being a higher rank is you're going to be able to purchase the big boy weapons from juan's workshop and arms dealers dotted around the country additionally as you continue to level up and become a high achieving guerrilla fighter anton castillo will reinforce his regions which as you can see here boosts their difficulty and this is actually designed so you don't go steamrolling the game because in theory you could actually get max level in one region Region, and then go one shot the other regions which actually remain at level three so this is a good feature in my opinion and does keep things challenging and progressive saying that you'll also notice there's skulls next to a few regions all that means is that we're not yet of a suitable rank to make a significant impact there so we can still visit it of course but just expect a more robust defense from the military on top of that you may notice the heat bar next to your mini map in the bottom left hand corner of the screen if you actually cause too much trouble by blowing things up and killing people special forces will come hunting after you and you can actually use guerrilla trails which are the blue lines dotted around your map to actually hide from them or you could just choose to fight them off but actually when it comes to your notoriety it does reduce the longer that you stay out of trouble by the way so it will just slowly reduce to nothing over time if you don't do anything of course however when it does come to this xp gain in general i think the big standout for me is the clearance of the fnd bases you can actually get pretty good and efficient at clearing them when you do have a good gear load out that you actually like and they actually award 300 experience and a shed load of resources for your camp which you can and then use on your weapons as well and that would be my recommendation if you just want to grind quickly for those heavy hitting weapons at Juan's shop. Now when it comes to your guerrilla camps they offer you a lot of buffs and benefits while you're out and about exploring Yara. We did discuss the three resources you'll need to upgrade your camps that being medicine, gasoline and metal and when you actually do have enough of these resources and of course once you've unlocked the storyline for that region you'll then be able to chat to a foreman at the camp who's going to be able to construct a building of your choice. There's two standouts here which I think should be your priority in construction. First is the hideout network facility and actually by making this you'll be able to unlock the wingsuit ability 
which is incredibly useful for crossing large distances of Yara, but you're also going to be able to unlock all fast travel hideout points across Yara by purchasing them from the vendor after construction. This actually allows you to fast travel to all hideouts across Yara, which saves you heaps of time of course, but it also allows you to airdrop in and then wingsuit glide to locations nearby them, and I have used this probably more than anything else in the game and would highly recommend it. Secondly, and that's the Gorilla Garrison, and by upgrading this you're then going to be able to purchase all the standard and advanced weapons in the game from the vendor, as well as actually see notable markers when using the recon laptop that actually overlooks all F and D bases. So this makes the assault a lot more enjoyable so you don't actually miss out on anything when you do decide to assault a military camp. You're also going to come across the Los Bandidos Operation Hub in these camps, and that's the place where you're going to be able to send your revolutionaries out and about in Yara on local missions. To do this though, you're going to need a guerrilla leader, and to actually get a guerrilla leader, you're going to have to complete side missions called Yaran Stories, and these are the purple icons on your map. If you complete more of these Yaran Stories and recruit more leaders, you're then going to be able to send more revolutionaries out on missions, which is going to earn you resources in the background. And by the way, folks, if you actually have found this video helpful or picked up any value so far, a very swift like down below only takes a second of your time and it would help me out a lot. So thank you very much. Now let's discuss some travel and transportation. And it is very important in Far Cry purely because the world is just so big. And thankfully, there is a lot of options for us here from riding a horse through the Korea trails to then flying a helicopter, plane, or even driving a James Bond Cuban whip with rockets in the headlights. But when it does come to land vehicles, there are four rides in this game, which you can customize once you've unlocked them. However, you can actually hijack a vehicle and then transport it back to a vehicle pickup point, which are the green icons that you can kind of see on your map here. You'll then be able to actually call that vehicle in the future from using these phone booths. And the same applies here for horses, aircraft, and even tanks. So essentially you can just nick a vehicle, drive it back, and then just recall it whenever you wish. However, a very cool trick here, which will save you some time. You can actually get your camera out in game and take a picture of the vehicle instead of driving it all the way back up to a phone booth pickup point. Once the picture's been verified, the vehicle will then populate into your infantry and you'll then be able to recall that vehicle from any point. But the caveat being that this doesn't actually work for military vehicles. So you're still gonna have to nick them and then drive them back to the garage. On top of that though, when you are driving on the road, if you just click down your left joystick on the console, it'll also drive you to your destination that you've placed on the map. And horses can also be called from horse posts throughout the game. So if you're just running through the wilderness and you do come across a horse post, you may as well just call a horse because it's gonna save you a lot of travel time as well. And there's also a lot of customizations options here. So same thing applies, spend a bit of time checking it all out in your menus and you can actually end up kitting your vehicle out with some pretty nice offensive and defensive weaponry if you do enjoy vehicle combat. Now, one of the main cool things about this game is co-op. You can actually play the whole story campaign with your mate, but you'll both first have to finish the tutorial island section. But as soon as that's done and you've picked up your Suprema backpack from Juan, you can actually join each other's session in the top right hand corner of the screen. Friendly fire can actually be turned on and off in settings for a laugh. And the main highlight here is the special operations that are available at each of your three Gorilla camps by interacting with Lola, the taxi driver. She also runs a black market shop, which refreshes daily. So you'll actually be able to earn Magenda currency from completing these missions and then spending it at her shop for some unique rewards. The special operations also allow you to play single player or you can actually queue in their matchmaking system while you're doing the storyline and then wait for someone else to join you. It's only two player at the moment, but Ubisoft have said that they do plan to release a new special operations every week. And as you can kind of see on the screen, there is quite a few coming, which I think is gonna keep things fresh. And I have actually played one so far and I do think it was good fun. So very much looking forward to more. So let's talk about some Amigos and these fangs for hire are gonna be working alongside you as you fight the oppressive Yaran regime. You'll be able to pick up Guapo during the island tutorial section and he's a tank who actually passively recovers health and even self revives after being downed. He's the kind of Amigo who takes all of the bullets and attention while you can just sit back and pick off everyone without taking damage yourself. Secondly, we have Chorizo and you can find him in the Magrogada region very early after you do start that region, by the way. He actually distracts enemies for that stealthy takedown option if you plan on playing a very stealth orientated build. And thirdly, we have Chichicharon and you can actually find him in El Este early in the storyline as well. And he actually slingshots himself to the enemy from quite a distance away and does some decent damage. And bear in mind, you can actually just go to both regions, do both quest lines, unlock both Amigos with no issues. Also, quick tip here, you can actually use your right D-pad button on the console to actually tell any Amigo that you have active at the time to either stay or to follow you. And also you can dismiss all pets by just heading into the Amigo menu and clicking dismiss. Speaking of the menus, you can actually customize their appearance and they'll actually upgrade their own abilities the more that you use them. So you will get rewarded for an improved Amigo the more they're actually killing NPCs. And finally, if you do have the ultimate edition, you will pick up champagne 
Kane and K900. They do pop into your infantry as soon as you finish the tutorial. So if you're wondering where on earth they are, just finish that section and then they'll become available to you. Now there's a lot of variety when it comes to combat in this game and there's some solid stealth options you can actually utilize here as well. So if you actually drop from a high height, you'll be able to just stealth kill an enemy. So you just need to drop on them. And then you'll also be able to chain assassinate the next enemy by just holding the direction of where they're actually positioned, which is a really cool feature. You can also holster your weapon using the weapon wheel, approach enemies, and then use a stealth takedown with your machete. Additionally, silences on your weapons are incredibly effective here in this game. But if you do use them too much, they overheat and then revert to the normal weapon sound. So do bear that in mind if you're planning on being quite sneaky. But you can also always revert to your throwing knives when it is cooling down. Saying that though, when you do come across a military base to clear, I would highly recommend you search for the recon laptop we spoke about earlier. They always overlook an FND base. And if you have the Gorilla Garrison maxed out, you're going to have everything inside ping up on your HUD. You're also going to be given some optional missions while clearing the base, like remain undetected and free prisoners are just some of the examples. And you'll pick up bonus experience and resources for actually doing these. And even though they are optional, they are worth the effort. Just know though, as soon as you actually kill the last enemy in the base, you go to a cutscene where the base is then just cleared. So if you haven't actually released the prisoner on that side quest, make sure you leave one NPC alive so you can go back and release that prisoner for the extra experience. Also, another cheeky tip with the anti-aircraft sites, you can actually fast travel to a nearby hideout, use the wingsuit to then glide directly to the anti-aircraft base, and then use your resolver backpack just to get rid of them very quickly and pick up your depleted uranium. Now, after you clear all of these types of camps, you're going to come across a Gorea scout, which is noted as an exclamation mark on the minimap, and they provide you with valuable intelligence and, and usually mark another military camp on your map. So you can kind of chain grind out these military camps if you want to for a lot of experience and resources. And by the way, if you've watched this far and enjoyed the video, consider hitting the bell icon so you can kind of find your way back easily as I've got a lot more Far Cry content coming and we'll be covering the game post-launch and DLCs. Also, if you haven't already, come hang out in our awesome Discord community with over 600 members. We've got a great set of people here and it would be awesome to see you in the lobby. Anyway, I hope this video was interesting and you picked up some value from it. I'm very much looking forward to catching you in the next one. And as usual, coffee's on me.